Okay, so at this point we introduced classification problem uh, in a formal setting, a binary classification, and now let's see how we can express performance or cost functions using this uh, notation. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next slide. And the very first thing that we want to talk about is the so-called concept of precision and recall. Okay, so what you need to understand at this point that in the binary classification we have two classes and the, right, and the one way to introduce performance is to simply focus on the positives which is always assumed to be the events of interest. So the positive group uh, for the given threshold. Okay, so we know that we can change the threshold and by changing the threshold we will vary what happens on our predicted side. So now we want to focus on uh, the positive group and see how well we can capture that group. And again, to summarize what we've learned so far, if this is my data set, this is my observed response y, say plus plus minus plus plus minus minus plus, okay? And uh, there is some kind of response surface h of x that we have constructed using the machine learning algorithm. And now, based on the decision rule and the specific user set threshold, uh, we are going to make predictions y hat that let's suppose it's plus, minus, minus, plus, uh, plus, plus, minus, minus. Okay? So one way to look at it is that uh, basically we can have uh, four different events here. You could have an actual positive, misclassified, I mean, correctly assigned as positive, predicted as positive, or you can have actual positive correctly, uh, incorrectly assigned to negative, or you could have a negative correctly predicted as negative, or you have negative incorrectly predicted as positive. So those four different events can be summarized on the table here. So this event will go into this cell. Uh, I'm assuming that usually positives are here, negatives are here, positives are here, negatives are here. So actual positive predicted as positive, or you have actual positive predicted as negative, so this goes to this cell, or you could have uh, actual negative predicted as negative, or you could have actual negative predicted as positive. So you have those four different scenarios. And, of course, usually in practice you have a data set that you're, you're, you're working with, so you're calculating, you're looking at all of these events, and you can simply count the number of all of these distinct occurrences. And uh, once they've been counted, they can be recorded in this table. And this type of event, plus plus, is encoded as uh, called true positives. Uh, this event here, when negative, is misclassified as positive. It's called for false positives. This event here, when positive is incorrectly predicted as negative, is called false negative. And, of course, negative correctly predicted as negative is called true negative. So those are the four different... Uh, counts different numbers that we usually can uh, introduce by looking at what happened in the data set. And uh, the table that results from it is usually called a prediction success table. Success table or in some, in some areas people also call it a confusion matrix. Now, the confusion matrix is an unfortunate name because if you want to present this to someone, you want to stay away from terms like confusion matrix and always talk about uh, prediction success. It's just uh, a little bit of a personal advice to you. 
But having done that, let's see. We still have a table of four numbers, but at least it's summarized in, in some general sense what happens uh, on our prediction side. Now let's see if we can summarize it even more in terms of uh, communicating the measure of performance. And our first measure is called precision. So let's look at, uh, let me pick another color here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to work with this uh, precision. So precision is defined as simply the ratio of true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. One way to think about it, the denominator is true positives plus false positives is essentially the sum of these two values. And in the numerator, we are taking true positives as a fraction of uh, this entire sum. Now, think about it. The sum of these two numbers represents the predicted pluses. So let's say I'm interested in identifying fraudulent transactions. And let's say if I identified, I predict, according to my machine learning algorithm, that 1,000 transactions are suspect to be fraudulent. What precision is going to tell me is what is the actual fraction of transactions that are fraudulent within that group that is, that is predicted as fraudulent. So if, say, my precision is 0.5, that means that out of 1,000 transactions that my class of my algorithm predicts as fraudulent, I expect to have about 500 as being indeed fraudulent. So the precision focuses on the predicted group as the basis, and then I'm just looking to see what is the precision within that predicted positive uh, event that's predicted as positive, what is the actual fraction of events that are truly positive. Now, on the other hand, we also have a recall. A recall, and sometimes known as sensitivity, approaches a situation from a different angle. The recall says, okay, now let's look at uh, the total number, uh, at basically the sum of true positives and false negatives. So if you look at this table, now we are taking the sum of these two numbers which is, as you can see, is the number of actual positives out there in the population or in the data set, because that's ultimately what we're working with. So you have that in the denominator, and again, the numerator is simply the number of true positives that were present in that predicted group. So what recall has done, in other words, it simply tells us, okay, I know that I captured some fraudulent transactions in the group that's predicted as fraud. But what is the actual fraction of total fraudulent transactions ex that exist out there that I managed to capture? And this is what we call recall here. There is also another term for it known as sensitivity, and uh, we will we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, there is an interesting relationship between precision and recall that I want you to know. And uh, that has to do with uh, basically how they balance each other when we uh, vary our threshold. Now, the thing is that regardless how you look at it, in the ideal case, you want your precision to be closer to 1.0 and you also want your recall to be close to 1.0. Which means whatever you identified as the result of your classifier is the only event uh, records of interest. So you're not making any mistakes. Now, if the precision is 1.0, that means that the false positive equals zero. If the recall is 1.0, that p means that the false negatives are zero, which ultimately means that you're making correct predictions uh, everywhere and there are no additional mistakes that are incurred. So the precision and recall, you want them to maximize, uh, to, to push them towards 1.0. Unfortunately, they cannot be uh, reconciled simultaneously as uh, happens time and again in practice. So you cannot just say, I want to optimize my uh, learning algorithms such that I am 
getting maximum precision or I want to maximize my recall to bring it to 1.0 and the reason for that is that simply whenever uh, you're trying to focus on one side of things uh, what usually happens is that the other side suffers so for example in graphical terms if I were to plot for instance uh, the precision on this axis and recall on this axis what usually happens and uh, again if this is uh, my 1.0 and a 1.0 and this is a 0 what usually happens is uh, when uh, your precision is close to 1 your recall is pretty small when your recall is close to 1 your precision is small and uh, what it means is that you'll have a curve that looks like this and again the precise numbers can be assigned on any individual case uh, but uh, one way to think about it is suppose I want to maximize my recall or my sensitivity that means that basically I want to capture all of the positives out there well one way to maximize my recall is to predict everyone as positive so I simply say okay take all of the transactions and assume that they are all fraudulent in this case my recall will be 1.0 because I will ca I will capture all of the fraudulent transactions out there the problem is that my precision will be pretty bad because uh, it will essentially be the percentage of fraud in the original data set which is in their entire population which is hopefully pretty small and likewise on the other side of the story here if I want to maximize my precision to 1.0 then uh, all I need to do is uh, find only one specific case out there that is guaranteed to be positive which allows me to fill up this cell over here with one uh, the this cell over here with one positive unit and then everyone else can be predicted as a negative so in this case my precision is a hundred percent because I know I've identified one potential fraud transaction and it really is fraud with a very high precision but at the same time my recall will be very low just because it's only a minuscule only one transaction out of so many out there and it is important to understand the natural balancing relationship between uh, those two measures okay in the next video we're going to expand on this and uh, uh, shift our focus from uh, focusing on one class only into a situation where we want to look at both classes, uh, positives and negatives, in a more kind of balanced way.